perpetrator of many of these shootings. And Ben Tracy learned more today about the strange beliefs of the alleged L.A. airport killer. The FBI agents who searched Paul Ciancia's apartment had a search warrant for his cell phone. They found it in his roommate's car. The warrant states they were looking for information relating to Ciancia's views on the legitimacy or activities of the United States government, including the existence of a plot to impose a new world order. Shortly after the rampage, police say they found a one-page letter in Ciancia's bag. It said he targeted TSA agents to, quote, instill fear in your traitorous minds, and also mentioned NWO, or New World Order. That's a century-old conspiracy theory, according to Mark Potok, who tracks extremist groups. Basically identifies the federal government uh, as an evil malefactor that is involved in a conspiracy to force the United States uh, into a so-called one world government uh, known as the New World Order. People who believe this theory are deeply suspicious of international organizations such as the United Nations and think the government plans a national seizure of all guns. They believe uh, that uh, the federal government intends to impose martial law on the country any moment now that that martial law will be imposed with the aid of foreign troops, probably UN Blue Helmets. Online talk shows perpetuate these anti-government views. Uh, federal security goon force. And often mention TSA officers.
In Italy, what's happening is a new fascism, a new way of fascism. The media revision of Italian history has already begun. You have seen in the previous three videos that modern atheism was a form of propaganda invented by the Jesuit Counter-Reformation in Europe, which included humanists such as Francesco Petra, who was also considered by most historians to have been the father of the Renaissance, and who coined the phrase, the Dark Ages, to describe Europe under the control of the papacy, which he also openly identified as the Antichrist. You have seen how atheism was an integral part of Jesuit activity in World War II in destroying Protestant Europe and replacing it with the Axis religions of Catholicism and atheism, as part of establishing the papacy's Third Reich, also called the New World Order. And how the Vatican's involvement with atheism continues right up into our very own day, where in officially atheistic countries, the Roman Catholic Church is the only recognized religious institution and operates openly under its government without impunity, while Christians and Jews are prosecuted, tortured and even murdered. You have also seen that atheist Stephen Greenblatt, claims to have had an encounter with a spirit which also spoke to him, and which deeply affected his state of consciousness, which seemed impossible, and yet was happening. You have seen how Stephen Greenblatt openly admitted the history of atheism can be traced back to the Vatican, admits the use of deception in his history, and how he deceptively identifies Roman Catholicism as Christianity, completely ignoring the real history of Christianity in Europe which was exterminated by the millions in compliance to Rome's Theodosius Codex. You also saw how Richard Dawkins openly identifies himself with the rule of the Vatican in Europe through the Anglican Church and defends the practice of Rome's Christ Mass calling it Christian history, when in fact, England's Christian history actually banned the practice. And you saw how Richard Dawkins openly identifies himself as a Luciferian, and openly admits using propaganda and deception to trick people into becoming converts to atheism. And you saw once again, even with Richard Dawkins, the same practice of historical revisionism is being used to deceive the public, concerning the history of science in his own field of biology. And you saw that his financial sponsor, atheist Charles Simon E. made his billions with Microsoft, and whose grandfather was the Prime Minister of the Kingdom of Hungary, and an elite academic who was directly connected to the Habsburgs in Hungary, which were the official royal family of the Holy Roman Empire, in which the Theodosius Codex from Pope VI III was historically instituted. The same Charles Simony who is a member of the Bohemian Grove, begun by the Jesuit Academy in Bohemia as part of the Jesuit Counter-Reformation Alumbrero or as people have come to know them today, the Illuminati. You saw how even his partner at Microsoft, despite his claims of atheism, has openly referred to his philanthropic activity as God's work, has a wife who is an activist Roman Catholic, and who purchased the only so original printed edition of the Theodosius Codex in the entire United States, for over a million dollars. In this video, you will see more evidence, that the religious right, and the atheist left, are in reality the same people, using the Hegelian dialectic to manipulate you, the public, into acceptance of a global Vatican state, referred to by Hitler, Stalin, and the papacy, as the New World Order. And you will also see quite contrary to what you have been told, the existence of God has been proven in science many many years ago. And in fact, it is Jesuit atheism, which is the obsolete paradigm without a shred of scientific evidence or proof, despite its public calls for support by Jesuit Luciferians masquerading as atheists. As you will soon see, Jesuit atheism is not about the existence of God. The existence of God has been admitted by even the most skeptical scientists. Jesuit atheism is about the definition of God only. And it is a definition which replaces the known creator with the papacy in an act of utter deceit and blasphemy. Their idea was to destroy old order in Europe. Their idea was to destroy old order in Europe. Their idea, their idea, their idea. To destroy old order in Europe.
Uh, the reason I got involved in public service, um, by and large, if I had to credit one thinker, one person, it would be Ayn Rand. I am the creator of a new code of morality, a morality not based on faith. I think Ayn Rand did the best job of anybody to build a moral case for capitalism. You are out to destroy almost every edifice in the contemporary American way of life our Judeo-Christian religion, our modified government-regulated capitalism, our rule by the majority will. Other reviews have said that you scorn concept of God. Are these accurate criticisms? Uh, yes.
I just want to speak to you a little bit about Ayn Rand and what she meant to me in my life and the fight we're engaged here in Congress. Uh, I grew up on Ayn Rand. That's what I tell people. I, uh, you know, everybody does their soul searching and, and trying to find out who they are and what they believe, and you learn about yourself. You are out to destroy almost every edifice in the contemporary American way of life, our Judeo-Christian religion, our modified government-regulated capitalism, our rule by the majority will. Are these accurate criticisms? Uh, yes. I grew up reading Ayn Rand, and it taught me quite a bit about who I am and what my value systems are and what my beliefs are. You are out to destroy almost every edifice in the contemporary American way of life, our Judeo-Christian religion. Uh, it's it inspired me so much that I, it's required reading in my office for all my interns and my staff. We start with Atlas Shrugged. Uh, people tell me I need to start with Fountainhead, then go to Atlas Shrugged. And there's a big debate about that. I am against God. I don't approve of religion. It is a sign of a psychological weakness. I regard it as evil. cultural Christian, the same way as many of my friends call themselves cultural Jews or cu cultural Muslims. Um, so yes, I love singing carols along with everybody else. I'm not one of those who wants to purge our society of our Christian history. 